Hey everybody, this is Garrett with Earth and Time and today I'm coming to you from the Las Vegas Natural History Museum here in the north part of Las Vegas. So I'm north of downtown, north of the Strip, all the famous places. But when I come to Vegas, I don't gamble. I want to come check out the dinosaurs and the natural history. So let's get to it. As I'm walking up, I love they have dinosaur tracks on the way in. Going all the way up to the entrance. And it looks like they are open 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And there is admission required. So I'll let you know what the cost is gonna be here in just a second. But I wanna point out a couple of things. That's an ichiosaur. So you can think of a reptilian dolphin that lived during the time of the dinosaurs. Up there's a Eurypterid, which was from before the time of the dinosaurs. There's some seashells and a little fossil fish a little palm frond in here and a bunch of dinosaur bones. Pretty excited to check this out and check out this gigantic piece of petrified wood. That's all really polished and been rolled around. I wonder where this came from and why it is so incredibly smooth. So I've entered the museum. Admission for an adult is $14. For children, it's $7. And if you have a military ID, uh, or a Nevada resident, there are discounts that are available as well, but I wanted to just show this entry, and these are life-size giraffes as you come in. That's pretty awesome. Come in here to the dinosaur gallery, and oh, look at these life-size dinosaurs. Oh, where do I start? This first dinosaur is called a Dilophosaurus, and you saw versions of them in Jurassic Park, but if you take a look at how large this one is and the fact they think it actually have feathers which you can see represented here that is really really impressive and here i am for scale again you can see how large the dilophosaurus was as far as the fossils that they found of them here's a little bit about dinosaur tracks and you all probably saw my very first video i ever did was actually on dinosaur tracks in southern utah and i'll link that video here but you can actually see a whole bunch of dinosaur tracks there and these would be slightly similar age these would be just a little bit younger than what you were looking at at that dinosaur track site these are mostly talking about the aztec sandstone which we also know as the navajo sandstone and here are some nice examples of those dinosaur tracks. In fact, these are actually from the track site, Johnson Farm, where I did my first video at. And so these are either, and now I gotta remember, I think these are growlator tracks is what they called them. You can see their little nails and you can see the knuckles, the, the footprints coming towards me. You can see the nails and the knuckles. So these have been growlators. The bigger tracks, if you watch that video, are Ubrontes. So they would have been a much bigger animal. And there's some vertebrae from my favorite dinosaur, the Allosaurus. And that's actually the state fossil for Utah. The state fossil for Nevada is the Ichiosaur, which is that reptilian kind of dolphin, which we can see right over here. It's called the lizard of the sea, so an Ichiosaur. So it looked a lot like a dolphin, but it was actually a reptile that lived during the time of the dinosaurs. And it's Nevada state fossil. I'm actually not sure which way the flow goes for this place, but I saw the Triceratops over here moving, so I wanted to stop and take a look. So Triceratops, or Ceratopsians, were found here in the United States, and there are actually quite a few of them here during the late Cretaceous, so basically to the end of the time of the dinosaurs, and they were contemporaneous with the animal everybody knows, and that's the T-Rex. And so there's a lot of speculation about the two of them having interactions, but just the size of these as well is pretty impressive. I think they were trying to get them as life size as possible. So here I am for scale again. I'm gonna step back. And so you can think about the Triceratops as a dinosaurian rhinoceros. And of course, the T-Rex is something like the lion of its time, right? So the dominant predator, pretty cool. One of the things that's fascinating to me is, is I've grown up being into dinosaurs is watching the change from them being more kind of classic scaly look which they have evidence they were scaly but they also have evidence that some had feathers on them and I love that they now have them look that way ooh and they even have a sound it's like a 
killer turkey. Or even worse, a killer peacock. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Maybe a killer chicken. And the killer chicken is actually Deinonychus, known as Terrible Claw. And it says Deinonychus changed the way we think about dinosaurs. And a large part of that is because they found feathers on them. And you can see this replica again showing feathers on it. Now, do they know that this is what the feathers look like? No, not exactly, but they do have impressions of feathers on these dinosaurs. And so the colors, not sure about, but they can recreate the fact that they had feathers and what those feathers probably the shapes of them and maybe the length of them and maybe how they were distributed, they can figure out from the fossil record. Before the dinosaurs, there are actually these finned, they are thrapsids, there was something between, I guess, a, a reptile and a mammal. They were their own type of creature, but they would have all been the predecessors to the dinosaurs and, and modern life that we have today. But you take a look at these Dimetrodons, and these would have been from before the time of the dinosaurs. So these are the types of creatures that were living during that time. And they have evidence of them in fossils as well as, they can look down below, they actually have trackways that they found of these different types of creatures from the time just before the dinosaurs known as the Permian. And here's a nice view of that. You have these metaposaurs which were more like an amphibian type feature. You can see there was like these crocodilian type features that were living during that time. And I already mentioned you had these Dimetrodon or, or Thrapsid type creatures living. Oh, this is cool. So moving from thinking about pre-dinosaurs back to dinosaurs again, these are some dinosaur swim tracks. And these were also found in St. George where I went to that dinosaur museum, my very first video again, and that was linked earlier. You can all take a look at that or look it up in my video history and see some of these swim tracks there as well. But what they can see on these is that dinosaurs were stepping and they'd leave a little scratches where they started to swim. There are much better examples of this though in that video and up in St. George. And we come to my favorite. The Allosaurus. So they're not nearly as big as Tyrannosaurus rex, but I think they are so cool looking. They actually have not quite as stubby arms, big claws. I know there's been some speculation that maybe they hunted in packs, much like a wolf pack or something like that. But I really like the Allosaurus. Oh, and look at this. They have an Ankylosaur, a big old club tail. There's the Allosaurus, big old club tail and Kylosaur. Oh, and look, they have little baby ones in there. Hi, little babies. Oh, and even moves. What? Look at that. It's moving. Watch, it's going to rock. Look, it's moving. <laughs> it's a cool display. Oh, and they have more baby dinosaurs. See, they're just trying to suck us in with all this cuteness. Are any of these moving, though? I don't see any of these ones moving. But they're cute and they're little baby sauropods or what you think about as the long neck dinosaurs. And they've actually found examples of nests and, and groups of nests together in the fossil record which gives them an idea, paleontologists an idea, about maybe how dinosaurs would all lay their eggs in a similar area and that way they'd be a lot easier to protect and there's a much better chance if you're having a lot of babies and at one time much like turtles that some of them are going to survive. Here's some trodons which are smaller theropod or meat-eating dinosaurs that were around during the Cretaceous and the scene is just showing them running across and finding some eggs that look like they've already gotten raided by some early mammal type. And you can see the mother, basically duck-billed dinosaur type, running over to protect her eggs. And you can see these little mammalian creatures. So mammals were around at the very end time of the dinosaurs, but they're very small. They're kind of shrew-like or or maybe weasel-like according to these. But they were never able to get really large because dinosaurs are around. So until dinosaurs went extinct, mammals really didn't get a chance to take over the world as we see today, or weren't as plentiful as we see today.
on the rocks. And some fossils. Let's go take a closer look. Here is a black light display called glowing rocks. So let's see what we have. So we have a long wavelength. We can hit the button and see what glows. I see some sodalite, some willemite and calcite. What else? Calcite really glows in there. There's some fluorites in there that glows. Lots of calcite. Okay, so that was the long wavelength. Let's see what happens when I do short wavelength. Does it change? All right, short wavelength. Ooh, oh, whoa. That's cool. A lot more colors pop out. Shelite, hydrozincite, bunch of interesting things. Opal, oh, look at the opal, turns green. That's really cool, really pretty. And here's a tip for all of you that live where there's scorpions. You can use black lights to find scorpions. So it's hard to see the scorpion in there. It's camouflage, but watch this. Boop. There's the scorpion. So living in the desert, I remember my family had a tungsten mine and they would go in and they could see the scorpions in the mine using the black lights that they also used to find tungsten. Let's learn a little bit about geology's natural resources. One thing maybe people forget is a lot of what we use day to day all comes from the earth and it requires a geologist to find the raw materials for it and they have this nice display here talking about the different types of materials geologists find and that we find from the earth and how it's used so let's take a look here's gypsum what's what do we use gypsum for predominantly drywall so your house right here's iron ore i bet people have lots of ideas about iron right use it for nails and anything pretty much metal there's a door handle as well copper i bet we're going to see some wiring what do you think yep electrical cords and wiring zinc what do you think we use zinc for it looks like it's something else they use in metals maybe to make them stronger i'm going to go next door to porcelain if we have an idea about that right toilets bathtubs that aren't plastic sinks porcelain's used in a lot of places for also for making plates and things like that silica is used in a lot of places windows you can see it for glass the silica gels that we all have in our food packs and it says quartz which is also silica but you'll see they also put in glass so kind of the same as same as it's really quartz silver ore we see silver in lots of things from batteries to utensils to cameras to whoa that's an old camera it's an old polaroid that's kind of cool bauxite so this is where your aluminum comes from and stuff for bricks as well but really aluminum is the primary primarily source from things like bauxite and last is gold and gold's used in a lot of electronics of course for fashion as well but key for day-to-day -day use, there's gold in your phones and any electronics, they usually have gold. They also have some replicas of fossils here. So here's a replica of Archaeopteryx, which was a reptilian that had feathers. They were one of the predecessors to modern birds and it's about 150 million years old. And this is a replica, it was actually found in Germany and it's part of the Jurassic period. Whoa, check this out. About 55 million years ago, just after the extinction of the dinosaurs, there were large birds that developed. And this would have been a six foot tall bird called a dia, a diatrima, I believe I'm saying that right. And look at the size of that beak. And here is a room with just a bunch of different skulls from different types of giraffes including ice age giraffes whoa look at that prehistoric giraffe it had giant horns coming out of it and here's more of a modern giraffe where it has the much shorter horns and here's a relative to camels that had horns it kind of looks like a, it's a boar or something and then if i look up look at the prehistoric bison wow smilodon or saber-toothed tigers and they have some other skulls in here including a ground sloth and some more prehistoric bison next to more of a modern cow skull to give you an idea of the size. 
And here's a little bit about all the different types of elephants, including mammoths and mastodons. And here's a modern elephant skull. Here's a prehistoric elephant. And look how different their tusks look. They even have some extra tusks there. Here's a really uh, an ancestor to the rhino. And here's another one. And there's a modern rhino skull to give you an idea how they changed through time. Pretty cool exhibit and really showing that you know much of this area actually probably looked a lot like Africa does today a hundred thousand years ago a million years ago even up to about 10,000 years ago you'd have a lot of animals that you think of and they'd have in Africa were actually living here and in Southern California pretty crazy to think about I'm not sure what this room is called but it looks like these are all Ice Age mammals and talking about, and maybe even slightly older than Ice Age mammals here. And I believe some of these are probably were found here in Nevada. So there used to be a giant lake here called Lake Lahontan that a lot of these animals would have roamed around. Now Lake Lahontan would have been north of here, but many of these valleys that are part of the basin range would have filled with lakes through time, off and on, depending on the amount of water they got. And during the ice ages, there's always a lot of water in the area. So these animals probably roamed here during that time but just let me give you an idea of what a cave bear looks like as I'm sitting here talking and to give you an idea that would be one heck of a bear hug that thing is huge ah here we go so Nevada's past these fossils were found at the site of an ancient spring adjacent to what now is there's an orchard foundation park called in a place called Floyd Lamb Park I'm not exactly where that sure where that is here but pretty interesting that they found mammoth teeth they found some arrowheads here, a rib bone scored by somebody, some flint shards, a piece of a long bone. So ancient horses used to live here. They found some rodents and bisons, parts of camels. So camels used to live here as well. They actually went extinct just like horses in North America. And then of course were introduced at a later time back here. Although I'm really interested in seeing the dinosaurs and the geology, there are a lot of other exhibits here, including ones on Egypt that you can check out. They also have a whole section on the ocean here, including these really neat displays showing different types of sharks. And these are actually ancient sharks that no longer exist that they found in the fossil record. So it's really neat that they show some of them and they talk about how sharks have changed throughout geologic history. And they have a bunch of models up above and a little aquarium here too. So kids can see fish. That was pretty cool. I definitely really enjoyed the scene with these life-size dinosaurs, all the information in here. I hope you all can make it in sometime and, and come visit this nice museum. I'm not going to have time to go through all the other exhibits that are here today. I've actually got to catch my flight back home. But I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, you all know what to do at this point. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next adventure. Thanks and take care. Yes, the dinosaur tree. Look at those. Oh, look at all the dinosaurs. Oh, look, Santa's riding a dinosaur.